How does morality emerge in people? Parents, religious authorities, and philosophers have long been captivated by this question, but moral growth has also gained traction in psychology and education. To what extent do parental or societal factors contribute to moral development? Do children acquire morals in the same ways? In examining some of these fundamental issues, American psychologist Lawrence Kohlberg created one of the most well-known theories on moral development. Ma Bu Hai. This is Owen and welcome to the discussion on Kohlberg's moral development theory, which is a fundamental concept in the study of morality in humans. This theory, which was developed by Lawrence Kohlberg, provides significant insights into the complex process by which people resolve moral conundrums, and change ethically over time. Kohlberg sheds light on how people approach ethical issues, ranging from the simple to the intricate, and how this shapes their moral compass through phases of moral reasoning. Come along as we examine this intriguing process of moral development and how it relates to our understanding of society and human conduct. But before focusing on Kohlberg's theory, let us talk first about moral development. Moral development is the process by which people develop the distinction between right and wrong which is morality, and engage in justifying between the two, or simply moral reasoning. It is a gradual process through which individuals acquire and internalize moral values, beliefs, and behaviors. A variety of factors, such as socialization, cultural standards, cognitive growth, individual experiences, and exposure to moral conundrums have an impact on moral development. The study of moral development seeks to understand how individuals progress through different stages of moral reasoning. It is essential in forming people's identities, interpersonal connections, and societal contributions. In order to better understand Lawrence Kohlberg's theory on moral development, it is best to provide a background on the formulation of the said theory. Kohlberg's theory on moral development is modified and expanded upon Jean Piaget's previous work but was more centered on explaining how children develop moral reasoning. Kohlberg proposed that moral development is a continual process that occurs throughout the lifespan. Kohlberg used Piaget's storytelling technique to tell people stories involving moral dilemmas. In each case, he presented a choice to be considered, for example, between the rights of some authority and the needs of some deserving individual unfairly treated. Using children's responses to a series of moral dilemmas, Kohlberg established that the reasoning behind the decision was a greater indication of moral development than the actual answer. By studying the answers from children of different ages to these questions, Kohlberg hoped to discover how moral reasoning changed as people grew older. The sample comprised 72 Chicago boys aged 10-16 years, 58 of whom were followed up at three yearly intervals for 20 years. Each boy was given a two-hour interview based on the ten dilemmas. Kohlberg was interested not in whether the boys judged the action right or wrong but in the reasons for the decision. He found that these reasons tended to change as the children got older. The main tool utilized by Kohlberg to gather his data was a story dilemma. To better understand the research of Kohlberg, let us look at one of the dilemmas used by Kohlberg. The case of Heinz. Heinz's wife was dying from a particular type of cancer. Doctors said a new drug might save her. The drug had been discovered by a local chemist, and the Heinz tried desperately to buy some, but the chemist was charging ten times the money it cost to make the drug, and this was much more than the Heinz could afford. Heinz could only raise half the money, even after help from family and friends. He explained to the chemist that his wife was dying and asked if he the drug cheaper or pay the rest of the money later. The chemist refused, saying that he had discovered the drug and was going to make money from it. The husband was desperate to save his wife, so later that night he broke into the chemist's and stole the drug. After presenting the case, Kohlberg will post moral questions. On the case of Heinz. The moral questions are. Should Heinz have broken into the laboratory to steal the drug for his wife? Why or why not? After presenting people with various moral dilemmas, Kohlberg categorized their responses into different stages of moral reasoning. He identified three levels of moral reasoning, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. Each level has two substages. 
According to Kohlberg, people can only pass through these levels in the order listed. Each new stage replaces the reasoning typical of the earlier stage. However, not everyone achieves all the stages. It must be noted also that disequilibrium plays a crucial role in Kohlberg's stages of moral development. A child encountering a moral issue may recognize limitations in their current reasoning approach, often prompted by exposure to others' viewpoints. Improvements in perspective taking are key to progressing through Kohlberg's stages of moral development. As children mature, they increasingly understand issues from others' viewpoints. For instance, a child at the pre-conventional level typically perceives an issue primarily in terms of personal consequences. In contrast, a person at the conventional level tends to consider the perspectives of others more substantially. We are now ready to discuss in detail the level of moral development according to Kohlberg. To begin with let us talk about level 1. Pre-conventional morality Pre-conventional morality is the early phase of moral formation. It continues until roughly the age of nine. Children's decisions at this age are mostly influenced by adult expectations and the repercussions of breaking rules. This level has two stages, stage one obedience and punishment. The earliest stages of moral development, obedience and punishment are especially common in young children, but adults are also capable of expressing this type of reasoning. Kohlberg claims that at this point, People view the rules as unchangeable and unalterable. Since following the rules helps you stay out of punishment, it is crucial. Stage 2 Individualism and Exchange At the individualism and exchange stage of moral development, children account for individual points of view and judge actions based on how they serve individual needs. In the Heinz Dilemma, children argued that the best course of action was the choice that best served Heinz's needs. Reciprocity is possible at this point in moral development, but only if it serves one's own interests. Let us continue with the discussion with Level 2. Conventional Morality. This period of moral development is marked by the acceptance of social rules regarding what is good and moral. During this time, adolescents and adults internalize the moral standards they have learned from their role models and from society. This period also focuses on the acceptance of authority and conforming to the norms of the group. There are two stages at this level of morality, stage 3 developing good interpersonal relationships, often referred to as the good boy good girl orientation. This stage of the interpersonal relationship of moral development is focused on living up to social expectations and roles. 6 There is an emphasis on conformity, being nice and consideration of how choices influence relationships. Stage 4 Maintaining Order This stage is focused on ensuring that social order is maintained. At this stage of moral development, people begin to consider society as a whole when making judgments. The focus is on maintaining law and order by following the rules, doing one's duty, and respecting authority. The last level of Kohlberg's moral development is level 3 post-conventional morality. At this level of moral development, people develop an understanding of abstract principles of morality. The two stages at this level are, stage 5 social contract and individual rights. The ideas of a social contract and individual rights cause people in the next stage to begin to account for the differing values, opinions, and beliefs of other people. Rules of law are important for maintaining a society but members of the society should agree upon these standards. Stage 6 Universal Principles Kohlberg's final level of moral reasoning is based on universal ethical principles and abstract reasoning. At this stage, people follow these internalized principles of justice, even if they conflict with laws and rules. To sum up, Kohlberg's stages of moral development provide a thorough framework for comprehending how people develop their moral reasoning from infancy to maturity. Pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional are the three primary levels and six unique stages that Kohlberg uses to illustrate the complex growth of moral reasoning from concepts of justice, universal ethics, and obedience and self-interest. For the adolescent, Kohlberg's theory of moral development can offer valuable guidance and support in your moral maturation journey. Here's how, self-reflection. Kohlberg's theory encourages you to reflect on your own moral beliefs, values, and decision-making processes. 
By understanding the stages of moral development, you can assess where you currently stand in your moral reasoning journey and identify areas for growth. Critical thinking. Kohlberg's theory emphasizes the importance of critical thinking in moral decision making. By engaging in moral dilemmas and hypothetical scenarios, you can practice analyzing situations from multiple perspectives, considering the consequences of your actions, and evaluating the ethical principles involved. Empathy and perspective taking. Kohlberg's theory highlights the role of empathy and perspective taking in moral development. By putting yourself in the shoes of others and considering their viewpoints and experiences, you can deepen your understanding of moral issues and develop a greater sense of compassion and empathy towards others. Ethical Decision Making Kohlberg's theory provides a framework for making ethical decisions based on universal moral principles. By internalizing these principles and applying them to real-life situations, you can navigate moral dilemmas with confidence and integrity making decisions that align with your values and beliefs. Seeking guidance. Kohlberg's theory emphasizes the importance of mentors and role models in moral development. You can seek guidance from teachers, parents, and other trusted adults who can provide support, feedback, and positive examples of ethical behavior, helping you grow and mature morally. Engaging in moral dialogue. Kohlberg's theory encourages open and meaningful conversations about moral issues. By engaging in moral dialogue with peers and adults, you can explore different perspectives, challenge assumptions, and broaden your understanding of complex ethical issues, furthering your moral development. Overall, Kohlberg's theory of moral development can serve as a valuable tool for you as an adolescent in your moral maturation journey, helping you cultivate critical thinking skills, empathy, ethical decision-making abilities, and a strong moral compass as you navigate the challenges and complexities of adolescence and beyond. Holberg's theory played an important role in the development of moral psychology. While the theory has been highly influential, aspects of the theory have been critiqued for a number of reasons. 1. Moral reasoning does not equal moral behavior. Kohlberg's theory is concerned with moral thinking, but there is a big difference between knowing what we ought to do versus our actual actions. Moral reasoning, therefore, may not lead to moral behavior. Overemphasizes justice, critics have pointed out that Kohlberg's theory of moral development overemphasizes the concept of justice when making moral choices. Factors such as compassion, caring, and other interpersonal feelings may play an important part in moral reasoning. 2. Cultural bias, individualist cultures emphasize personal rights while collectivist cultures stress the importance of society and community. Eastern, collectivist cultures may have different moral outlooks that Kohlberg's theory does not take into account. 3. Age bias, most of his subjects were children under the age of 16 who obviously had no experience with marriage. The Heinz dilemma may have been too abstract for these children to understand, and a scenario more applicable to their everyday concerns might have led to different results. Four. Gender bias, Kohlberg's critics, including Carol Gilligan, have suggested that Kohlberg's theory was gender biased since all of the subjects in his sample were male. Kohlberg believed that women tended to remain at the third level of moral development because they place a stronger emphasis on things such as social relationships and the welfare of others. While Kohlberg's theory of moral development has been criticized, the theory played an important role in the emergence of the field of moral psychology. Researchers continue to explore how moral reasoning develops and changes through life as well as the universality of these stages. Understanding these stages offers helpful insights into the ways that both children and adults make moral choices and how moral thinking may influence decisions and behaviors. As we conclude our discussion on Kohlberg's theory of moral development, let us reflect on the profound insights we've gained into the complexities of moral reasoning and ethical growth. Kohlberg's framework has illuminated the stages through which individuals progress in their understanding of morality, from a simple obedience to authority to a more sophisticated consideration of universal principles. Primarily, we explore the three main levels of moral development proposed by Kohlberg. Pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. Each of these levels represents a critical phase in an individual's moral evolution reflecting different motivations and perspectives on right and wrong. 
Also, it's crucial to note that not everyone reaches the highest stages of moral development, and progression isn't always linear. Factors such as life experiences, education, and exposure to diverse perspectives can influence moral growth throughout one's lifetime. Furthermore, Kohlberg's theory underscores the importance of moral education and cultivating environments that promote ethical reasoning. By fostering critical thinking and encouraging individuals to consider the broader implications of their choices, we can contribute to the advancement of moral development within our communities. In closing, Kohlberg's theory continues to be a valuable framework for understanding how individuals navigate the moral landscape. It challenges us to reflect on our own moral reasoning and invites us to strive towards higher ethical standards in our personal and professional lives. As we depart from this lecture, I encourage each of you to apply these insights in your interactions and decisions. Let us aspire to cultivate a society where moral development is nurtured, and where individuals are empowered to make principled choices that contribute to the greater good. Thank you for your attention and engagement throughout this session. Let's continue this important conversation and endeavor to make meaningful contributions to the field of moral psychology. Mabu Hai. This is Owen always reminding you to be the best version of yourself.